Welcome. Welcome to the new perspective of healing. No, I said. But in reality, it is as old as creation. Yeah. The subject is healing. You see, it has to be as old as creation. Because the components that is going to address healing or bring about healing has to be one that is considered native geologically. Native plants are natural plants. Natural plants are electrical. Why? The base of natural plant, the very foundation, is what the Chinese call the CHO arrangement. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So in life, to life expression, for life to express itself, or to exist, there has to be what? Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The Chinese call it the Cho. I agree. <clears throat> what does Cho have to do with healing? It is the structure that would allow a substance to readily assimilate biologically without carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That substance is non-electrical. It is non-organic. So, as we take a look at life, we want to clear the air. We want to dismiss the, the, that myth. We want to dispel the myth that this and that is incurable and that this and that disease came to the process of what? Germ, virus, or bacteria. Well, you see, this is the philosophy of medicine. As you can see, I am of a genetical predisposition that is African. I am an African and I think that it is the greatest thing that ever happened to me to be born an African. Or like if I was a Chinaman, I would have loved to be a Chinaman, or a Caucasian, or an Arab, or an Eskimo. So, we are talking this way to show that whatever you are, that is what you were supposed to be. And as we are that expression that life made, like life expression carved out this image you call Sebi. I had no control of that. So as we travel on the journey of healing, we want, we want to ask one question that hasn't been asked in my lifetime that I know about and probably it has been asked. And I am totally unaware of it. It doesn't mean that it wasn't asked. Why do we get sick? The body was not designed to be sick.
Bird doesn't get sick. Elephant doesn't get sick. He needs no vet. The lion need, doesn't need a vet. Neither is a giraffe. Or any of the natural animals. Why do we get sick? There has been a violation. A violation. That is costing us our life today. And it would have been okay if I live happy until I die because of the violation, but that isn't what's happening. Because of the violation, I become stressed. I become extremely stressed until I die. Why? do we get sick? What is the violation? The violation comes with creation, the understanding of it. The violation is when we have forgot or dismissed the ecclesiastics when it is said, the herbs are for the healing of the nations. But we don't care about that. God, you make your statement that the herbs are good. We are conditioned for a chemical God. So God, whatever you have to say is in trouble today. Because I... Pastor Gale, I'm referring to my brother. I'm a preacher. For 30 years, God, and my brother Sebi, known as Dr. Sebi, came and showed me in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, Ezekiel, and Revelation, that the herbs are for the healing of the nation. But what my brother Sebi didn't know that the food that I have been trained to eat have turned me against the very God that I claim to worship. I will compel. I am compelled to violate that greatest image, that greatest structure, God and the organic world. So now, I don't want to take you into a crazy maze of a bunch of words that I am deploying to you. I want to make sense because you make sense. We all make sense. Why are we sick? And where is the violation? Oh, I want to say this before we get into the subject, that the reason for the violation and the violation didn't come to me until I was about 50 years of age. But I was born here in Honduras, in Ilanga, a little village with seven houses. And that little boy is going to grow up in that village until the age of eight. And you mean to tell me that from that position, which the house in which I was born was ground. It was the dirt. We didn't have any ceramic or wood. Mama didn't have that. Mama had the dirt floor. It was always clean. So from that level of being born in Ilanga, Honduras, to have made this leap into the understanding of things that I would arrive at deploying these words to you about health. The boy never been to school. The boy didn't read any books. 
I would lease of the candidate that could think about occupying a position that could be credible. Well, guess what? Nature des designs and decides that. The violation, you're going to see it. You see, I said we're going to travel on this journey. It's a beautiful journey. It's a beautiful path. It's peaceful because it brings understanding. Look carefully about the way the African live in the jungles. Look at the way the anchor live in the desert of Nazca. Look at the way the Maya lived in Central America. And then we go to the Toltecs and the Olmecs in Mexico. Then we go to the Cheyenne and the Sioux, those American Indians. Carefully, we're going to begin with that. The African, the anchor from South America, the Maya Central America, the Toltecs and the Olmecs from Mexico, and the American brothers and sisters, natives. You know what we are called by certain, on certain levels of understanding? We are called the organic family. The organic family? All families are organic, not so. I was in Nazca, Peru, which I travel once in a while. I love Peru. I've been going to Peru since 1955. And I enjoy going to Peru like I enjoy going to Mexico. It was in Peru that I became aware of the organic family through a Peruvian Inca descendant. He said, Black man, are you aware or do you have any idea what you represent? I said, no, Paul. He said, well, we have something in common. We are a member of the organic family. What do you mean by that? You see, the organic family is exactly what we say it is. Organic. No waste. We do not produce waste. Everything about us is recyclable. And this is why we didn't have any toilets. Oh God, what is this? This man is showing me something that I have never before heard. We didn't have any toilets. Sit now. We have any toilets. We didn't need that. Remember, what we ate was products that are considered native. No starch, no uric acid, no blood. No blood, no starch. Uric acid, blood. Carbonic acid, starch. You see, when we ate, we ate electric food. That's all we had in our environment. The organic family only had electric food as part of their diet. So they ate very little and infrequent. It wasn't necessary to eat three times a day with plates full of tanya, dashing, cassava, and blood. Not to mention the rice, which is starch, glycerinic acid. No, we didn't have that. The organic family only ate electric food. 
So when he passed his feces, he could pass his feces in his hands and put it back in the soil. But the family, he said, that live outside of that cosmic arrangement, you don't want to be around when they use the bathroom. It's something that is horrible. Imagine what goes on inside if what you smell is so unpleasant. What goes on inside? So the organic family, being that it was electric food, their diet, there was no waste. This was recyclable. Didn't need a toilet. Do you understand, black man, what I'm saying to you? You remember Paul? <laughs> I said, of course. And I love it. The organic family was never diseased. Why? It was impossible. It was impossible because we live within the arrangement, the procession of life. I'm not an anchor, and there are certain things that are indigenous to the anchor. I am not a Sioux or a Cheyenne. I am not a Toltec. I'm not a Maya, but I am an African, and there is a connection with the family. So, I was compelled to direct my thought patterns, my vision, towards the continent. I am an African. And what does that mean? It means that when creation designed the African, there was a food that were designed for that African. And if you believe that this is an untrue, well then, let us take the diet of the African and give it to the man that lives in the ice, the Inuits. No, he was designed to eat whale and fish. We were designed to eat something green. But nonetheless, it was compatible with our genetical predisposition. So now we come to why we are sick. The African had a food the Eskimo had a food. The Inca had a food that you do not find in Africa, nor what is in Africa you find in Peru. But what he needed was in Peru. And what I needed was in Africa. If I ever make the mistake and select a component or a thought from another gene predisposition, or another geography. I'm only saying, hey fellas, I am blind. I, I need to go to Kathmandu. I need to go to Nepal. I need to go to India. Or I need to go to Europe. And what you going there for? You see, I'm blind. I am totally lost. And being that I am lost, I don't know what is what and where to go. You see? We are blind. And we show it. We show it. I have friends that have books written by scholars from all over the world from all religious structures, scholars 
me. I'm too ignorant for that. You see, I was spared. I didn't go to school. So the work of a scholar has no place in my environment. Why? Because what scholar do you know that has written a paper or a book that addresses gene food consistency? Nobody. And if we going to violate that cosmic arrangement, all else is useless. It doesn't matter. You're violating. You are stressed. What do you mean? Yeah, there is such thing as African food. And it isn't rice and beans and carrots. Cows, chicken and hogs. Lamb or goats. No. It isn't rice and beans. We didn't have that. Those things was brought to us. These are the things that makes us sick. The violation was done over a period of years. The African has been misled. Who do we African people point our fingers to to say you are responsible? We don't know, but we know this, that we have been violated from a cellular structure. We've been violated that is causing pain and anxiety today among us. Stress. Stress so much that we blow our own brains out and offend others in many different ways and levels. I am manic, but I contain it with my suit, my tie, and my cup of coffee, not to mention my watch and my Mercedes. But one day, very soon, the doctors would say, hey man, you got something on you, in you, about you. And what is that, doc? It is cancer. Cancer? Well, my ancestors didn't have cancer. It was unknown. Why do I have cancer? Well, it's a virus. And what do you have? Uh, the other one has AIDS. Uh, that's a virus. The other one? Herpes. That's a virus. Everything happened to be a virus, a germ, or a bacteria. How do we know that? We don't know that. Among all the writers in the black community, in the diaspora, none of them paid attention to what we should have been paying attention to, our health, our health, that would privilege me, would help me to love you and each other and myself first. That was omitted. We know all about the religious people. We know all about the cross and Jesus. We know all about that. But when we go home to eat, we eat something that was definitely offend our biological and cellular structure. Why is that? Where did that message come from that we were supposed to eat starch and blood as a diet when these things offend the black man's biology? So, today, we are carving out a little path into the past 
And what we found, that yes, we are a member of the organic family and that we didn't have any waste to rid ourselves from. But once in a while in New York, in LA, and anywhere you go, you see these trucks that written on them, it says waste management. How do you manage waste? I don't know. It's waste. Why even manage it? Why produce it? This is the reason why we are sick. So today, we want you to know that we are a member of the organic family and that because of that understanding or level of understanding we could put forth the effort to ameliorate much of the ills that beset us isn't that beautiful to come to that level of understanding that we need to change our diet to that which is compatible with our cellular predisposition. The African. I am not saying that the African is better than the Caucasian or that the African is better than the Chinese. When you begin to compare races and groups, then something has to be wrong with you. We are different. I am not a Caucasian. I am not a Chinaman. I am an African, which means that I am compelled to follow that cosmic dictate and that nothing should interfere with it. And do we now have the right to address this health situation that we are faced with? Ebola? Ebola, cut it out. That's a joke. Africa been dying for the last 500 years. The immunological system of the African has been compromised. Look at the diet of the African. None of it is African. Not to mention us. What do we do? Well, we fix it. We fix it. That was the conversation that I had with my mother before she passed. She said, you know, when you were a little boy, they used to ask me, what is Fred going to do? I used to tell him, I don't know. They asked your grandmother, Mama, hey, that's my grandmother. What's going to happen to Fred? What is he going to do? My Mama, hey, would say, I don't know. Well, why don't you send him to school? That's when my grandfather would step in and say, Gorillas doesn't take the cubs to be trained by polar bears. He will not go to school. He have to learn that which is consistent with his journey, with his cosmic journey. So I'm the little boy that didn't go to school but didn't understand why. But now that I'm at the age, in my winter of my age, I could see why my parents did that to me. They wanted me to stay clean, that I would be able to absorb just the material that life had to offer, not the philosophy of life. And that is where we're going to end this chapter, that the black man is not philosophical, that come from another society. Philosophy has not done anything in ameliorating the condition of health that exists on the planet today. The philosophy of medicine is 
it exists. Disease exists because of germ, virus, bacteria. So we have to treat it with a chemical, cyanide, arsenide, mercury, or antimony. That makes a lot of sense to philosophy, which is ours. We don't need philosophy. We are not philosophical folks. We are organic folks. The people that live by philosophy, they produce waste. Now we go to the organic family. What is the thought structure? There is none. I'm obedient, and that's all I have to be. Obedient to the laws of life, the arrangement of life. The elephant doesn't live by a philosophy, nor the giraffe. He just obey what his mommy and his papi ate through generations of existence. So it comes in now. Honor thy mother and thy father, that thy days may be long upon the land. And that is what Dr. Sebi did. He went to the mother country, selected plants, and voila! AIDS are being cured. Ebola is being cured. Diabetes, sickle cell anemia. Oh, sickle cell anemia. The disease that beset every black person on the planet today is sickle cell. Why? Well, you know, every plant lives by the dictates of the DNA that represent that plant. Like if I go to Burdock, I'm looking for iron. But if I go to the lily of the valley, I'm looking for something else, calcium and iron combined. But if I want calcium in its purest form, I go to sea moss. If I want phosphorus, I go to the sentinella plant. And so it goes with plants, and so it goes with birds, animals, and man. My food is not what I've been giving. The cure has to be organic. Phosphates carbonates, iodides, and bromides. This would ensure equilibrium in the body. They would begin to cleanse and revitalize. Stress would be diminished and a new direction would be presented to you. This is the first of three chapters acquainting you with the journey of the organic family. That is where Bolingo steps in. The Bolingo group, the love group, the organic family. Thank you very much.